Okay, so we're gonna go and focus on our maxillary now. Let's see a freer first. Let's push that turbinate back over. So I'm gonna go ahead and just open up that space so we can see the unsinate well. I'll take the ostium seeker. As we talked about on the panel yesterday, um, this ostium seeker is your friend to really sort of move that unsinate, but I don't like to destabilize it at all. So I'm really just making sure that my backbiter can fit into that space. Normally I use a pediatric backbiter just because it's a lot more um, delicate I like all of my instruments to be small, but because we've done the ethmoidectomy here, we can actually use a regular side biter. So I'm just pulling that unsinate into the nasal cavity so that I'm not scraping the undersurface. You can see that that's the edge of the unsinate, and I can actually even start to see the natural ostium, and this is just a zero degree scope. And you can see how that's different than the accessory ostia here. So once I've just made that one nice horizontal cut, there's the, just the pedal pushed over. I can't, I gotta use my left foot. It's my bad knee. Can't balance on that one. All right. So now to remove the superior portion of the unsnit, I'm gonna go ahead and use uh, the microdebreeder. And there are a lot of different ways to do this. Um, if you wanted to save this as a graft, obviously you would take it out as uh, sort of a whole piece. And the degree of how much of the unsinate you'd like to remove um, partly depends on what the rest of your dissection is going to be. And I'm going to leave a little bit of this at the very top just so that for the frontal dissection you have that anatomy as well. But you can see how you can continue to remove this more and more superiorly. And then I'm gonna to switch to the 30 degree scope, which is what I always sort of do at this point, even though we can actually see the natural ostium. Part of the reason that I do that, oh, let's see. Arif, how do I switch this? Sure. 30, let's see, got it. Thank you. And normally I would switch to a, a thin curved suction. I think we will, but I'll stay with the navigation just so we can use that. And so when I switch to the 30 degree, a lot of times if that was not obvious, you'll be able to see the natural ostium just by solely switching to the 30 degree scope. In this case, um, what we do, we leave all of this anteriorly alone just so you're not disrupting the mucosa as far as mucociliary clearance is concerned, we're just gonna widen this posteriorly. So normally I would use a curved turbinate scissor, which we actually don't have. Can I steal the through cut for a second? Or an up through cut, um, which we also don't have. So we're making do with the straight through cut. I'm gonna twist my hand into that space and just with sharp dissection, you can connect that to that accessory ostia. So I'm gonna go ahead and enlarge that posteriorly. Um, then I'll use that in a second. Um, normally I would use a large side biter, but just to sort of save time here, I'm gonna see if I can do some of this just with the microdebreeder. So now we can see the interior of the maxillary sinus. I'm gonna go ahead and remove some of this as well. Awesome. And on this scan, we can see, this is sort of what I was talking about earlier today, the maxillary, medial maxillary wall is really encroaching on, I think this might be clogged. Do we have like, yeah. All right. The medial maxillary wall is really kind of encroaching into the nasal cavity. Um, and so depending on, again, how large of an antrostomy you want to make, you can keep removing some of this bone. You wanna be mindful of that sphenopalatine artery as we're getting further inside. 
And then I'm going to use a large side biter now. A small side biter. Okay, that'll work. <laughs> I mean, whatever you have. So this, um, I'm going to enlarge this now inferiorly. So I'm just going to make a little shelf here, and then I'll take the yep side biter now. And I'm going to seat that in that little down cut that I just made. And now I'm going to rotate that out into the nasal cavity. So I'm sort of swinging that out. And then I can use the micro debrider to actually remove that tissue. Great. So this is just a 30 degree scope. You can actually see the impression of the infraorbital nerve along the top of the sinus there. Can I take that large side biter again? Eric, can I grab the side biter again? Sorry. No worries. I'm just gonna get that tissue out of here. And so at this point, um, you might decide that this is sufficient for your um, antrostomy, depending again on how large you want to make it and what you're trying to accomplish. I think this is clogged. Awesome. So now I'm just going to extend this by doing uh, removing the medial maxillary wall or doing a mega antrostomy or medial maxillectomy. So um, the inferior turbinate, we're going to remove a portion of the inferior turbinate. Can I get the freer for just a second? So I think that Raj already did this, but I'm going to just check the stability of this inferior turbinate again. So I'm going to kind of move it a little bit, both in fracturing and out fracturing. You want to leave the front part of the turbinate. And so for sometimes you can use I know. We've, so you could use a snap to mark out where you want to make this cut. And I'm kind of aiming towards the maxillary sinus here, making sure that I'm leaving a good portion of the anterior head of the inferior turbinate. This is unfortunately a straight scissor. So I'm going to kind of modify what I normally do. A curved inferior turbinate scissor is definitely a better instrument for right here. I'm going to make my anterior cut. So again, just starting out by removing that inferior turbinate, um, the mid portion of the inferior turbinate. Normally I would use, um, again, the curved um, scissor. And then I'm going to kind of come across the back, back edge. So we can pretend that we're using this, the correct instruments here. And you leave a little edge. There's the turbinate of the posterior edge, and then you're going to cauterize that just because there are always some blood vessels that are there. Now, in a normal situation, um, I would raise a flap along the medial maxillary wall here. I get an ostium seeker. We're not going to do that just in the interest of time. So normally what I do is, um, well, let me clean this up just a little bit more so we can see a little bit better. So we can see that medial maxillary wall that we're going to remove. And especially for an inflammatory case where you're making a large opening, I'll take that in two, yeah, a uh, down biter, I'll take a down biter. And, or yeah, that's what you have. So uh, if you're making a mucosal flap, I just use a needle tip bovi and create a posterior edge and then an anterior edge and then use a caudal to elevate that down into the nasal cavity. No, it's okay. I don't want to take the time, unless you think we need to. So then once you've removed that mucosa, I'm going to go ahead and use uh, the down biter again to basically make a posterior cut, sort of at the posterior edge that I want to make, uh, remove the medial maxillary wall. And then I'll use this side biter again. This bone is just a little hard from being frozen. Then I'm going to use the side biter to see if I can just remove this. And there are a lot of different ways that you can actually remove some of this bone. Thank you. It starts to get hard as you get lower towards the nasal floor. 
and you can actually use a drill. Do you have the side biter again? Thank you. And then how far forward you extend this, again, partly depends on what your, what your, jo what your job is, what you're planning to do inside of the sinus. Um, do you have the freer again? Yeah, I'll, I'll switch to a more angled scope. Let's just, uh, yeah, that would be great. 60 would be great. So here, um, we'll look under this anterior edge of the inferior turbinate. And you can extend, so Hasner's valve is kind of above us right here. We're underneath the opening into that nasolacrimal system. And you could keep extending this anteriorly all the way to the face of the maxillary sinus. So especially if you wanted to work more anteriorly, um, you can continue to do that. I'm not going to do that right now just for in the interest of time. How do you switch this? I'm going to switch, go ahead and just go directly to a 70 degree scope just so that we can see inside of the sinus further. It's reverse post. Okay. All right. So now I've switched to a curved microdebrader and I'm using the 70 degree scope. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah, I'll just show that and then you guys can switch. Let's do the, where did the suction go? Take the freer. Anything else you want to show us? No, I think we're good. All right, awesome. We'll switch, all right. <laughs> and we're done. Thank you, that was great.